In October 2019, the Prusa Mini launched to a lot of fanfare. It was a different time, pre-COVID, pre-supply chain chaos, and pre-budget printer boom. Back then, no other manufacturer could touch what Prusa was offering. Reliable print quality, beginner-friendly features, and all at a price point that felt almost too good to be true. The Mini was celebrated as the perfect beginner printer, compact, affordable, and versatile. It was perfect for classrooms, hobbyists, and even small-scale print farms. It had Prusa's reputation for reliability packed into a smaller, cheaper machine. But here we are in 2024, and the landscape has changed. The Prusa Mini, well, feels like the neglected middle child of the Prusa family. The once game-changing features are starting to look dated, and it's hard to ignore the fact that other brands have surged ahead. With competitors offering faster, smarter, and sometimes cheaper machines, is the Mini still worth it, especially at the $429 price tag Prusa is asking? In this video, we'll take a close look at the Prusa Mini. We'll revisit its history, the developments, or lack of developments, since its release, and see how it stacks up against today's competition. I'll tell you up front, it's not a simple story. My conclusion might surprise you. Probably not. Let's dive in. In October 2019, Prusa launched the Mini with its 7-inch by 7-inch by 7-inch build volume, color LCD screen, and network connectivity. It was a bold step for Prusa, introducing features that were brand new to their printers at the time. The Mini offered a hot end capable of reaching 280 degrees Celsius, a heated bed that could hit 100 degrees Celsius, making it versatile for a wide range of filaments, and it all came at just $349 US, a price that promised to disrupt the industry. Prusa billed the Mini as the ultimate beginner printer, fast, reliable, and easy to assemble in just three parts. It was designed for worry-free printing, with features like mesh bed leveling and promises of future upgrades, Wi-Fi capabilities, power panic, and even potential camera integration hinted at in the Prusa blog. Expectations were sky high, and I was all in. The Mini wasn't my first 3D printer, but it was my first Prusa. Before this, I had an M3D Micro, a tiny Kickstarter machine that was more frustration than function. It was enough to get me hooked on 3D printing though, and when I saw the Mini, I knew I wanted to buy into the Prusa ecosystem. I wanted a printer that just worked, a printer that would get better with time. When my Mini arrived, I couldn't wait to get started. The setup was as quick and easy as promised, and I was printing test models, Benchies, dogs, you name it, in no time. Watching the hot end performance mesh bed probing was like magic compared to the trial and error of manually leveling my M3D Micro with a credit card. It didn't take long before I bought a second Mini. Over the years, I've printed thousands of hours and gone through hundreds of kilograms of filament. Even today, I still marvel at how well my Minis handle first layer adhesion and how durable the original build plates are. While most of my printing has been in PLA, I've had no issues printing ASA on my enclosed Mini. Reliability has always been its strong suit. Then COVID hit. My printing focus shifted from trinkets and household items to mask straps. The Mini wasn't big enough to print face shield bands like the Mark III, but it was perfect for mask straps. I printed hundreds, distributing them to anyone who needed them in the Kansas City area. My Mini became more than just a hobby machine. It was helping during a crisis. At first, I was thrilled with my Prusa Mini. The setup was easy, the prints were clean, and everything just worked. Or at least it seemed to. But it didn't take long for some cracks to appear. Let's start with a feature that quietly vanished from the product description, Power Panic. Back in 2019, the release blog proudly stated, we also have our safety features in place, three thermistors, power panic, and more. But here's the thing, the Mini didn't ship with power panic. For years, complaints about this missing feature filled the firmware GitHub repository. Finally, in February of 2024, Prusa broke their silence with this statement. I'm so sorry, we tried our best over the years, but, we would never release a feature that is not considered to be reliable enough, and sadly, we actually had to remove the feature from the product description. We have made a step back by adjusting the product description, but I can't exclude further attempts to make this work. That part, totally fine. I get it. 
Sometimes a feature doesn't work out, but they didn't stop there. They added, we keep improving our best printer on a budget, Prusa Mini, even now, four years after its release, bringing brand new features consistently with Prusa Mark IV. Ironically, as an example, you didn't pay for fast printing with Input Shaper, and the price paid by early adopters back then was funnily lower too. Oof. Apologizing while telling users they should be happy with other improvements, it stings a little. It feels like they're saying, here, take what we give you and be grateful. And to be fair, I am grateful. Mostly. But let's talk about the upgrades that really made an impact and the ones that left me shaking my head. The Super Penda Upgrade. When the Mini launched, it came with the Minda Probe, a metallic sensing bed sensor. It was fine for most use cases, but it had a glaring issue. It was temperature sensitive. Printing back-to-back -back jobs with a heated bed and hot end often led to wild inconsistencies in the Z layer offset. At the time, forums and GitHub were filled with users trying to figure out why, why their first layers were failing. Many were told they must be doing something wrong, but in reality, the Minda probe might have been the culprit. In 2020, Prusa introduced the Super Pinda, a more reliable, temperature-independent probe. They launched this as part of the Mini Plus, which also came with a $50 US price hike. For existing Mini owners, they offered an upgrade kit for $25.99 US, which included the Super Pinda and a redesigned bracket to install it. I bought the upgrade for both of my Minis and the difference was night and day. Gone were the random first layer failures and my prints became consistent. But the whole situation never sat right with me. Prusa knew the Minda had a hardware flaw they couldn't fix with firmware. Instead of issuing a recall or providing free upgrades for owners with the Prusa Mini already, it felt like they said, if you want to fix this issue, if you want to print back to back on your 3D printer, you're going to have to give us more money, which seems ridiculous. Let's talk about a more recent upgrade, Input Shaper and Pressure Advance. These features arrived in November 2023 via a firmware update. According to Prusa, Input Shaper reduces ghosting by canceling resonance vibrations. It works by analyzing the printer's movements and applying a filter to its input signals. Thanks to faster travel speeds and acceleration, it minimizes stringing and enables faster printing. The pressure in the nozzle is compensated by another firmware feature, Pressure Advance. In short, this update is a game changer for speed. With the new firmware and slicer profiles, this Prusa Mini can print a 16-minute Benchy. That's a feat that would have been unthinkable before this update. I printed this green Benchy in just under 17 minutes. Compare that to this white ASA one, which took about an hour. The green Benchy does show what looks like under-excrusion and cooling issues. I then tried to print a Robo Alpaca using the same bonkers Benchy settings scaled down a bit, the legs broke free from the bed, but still, this speed upgrade is awesome. But here's the catch. The Mini doesn't ship with the hardware needed to calibrate input shaper, like accelerometers. Instead, Prusa measured the necessary calibrations in-house and pushed those settings to all Minis through firmware. My under-extrusion, cooling issues, or whatever is going on might be because of that. I don't know. They sell an add-on accelerometer for the Mark IV, but it is not compatible with the Mini. Factory calibration might work for printers fresh out of the box, but both of my Minis were kits. I assembled myself, and over the years I've replaced parts, maintained them, and even tinkered with their build. There's no way that my printers resonate exactly like the ones Prusa tested at their HQ. Compare that to Bamboo Labs A1 Mini which comes with onboard accelerometers. Part of its setup process involves calibrating input shaper for your specific machine. That's the kind of forward thinking design that makes the mini feel dated. I've talked to Prusa support on about a dozen occasions, going back and forth, printing test models to nail down the under extrusion that I'm seeing 
and a support agent eventually just said, the cooling on the Mini just can't keep up. That is quite a letdown. The Prusa Mini is undeniably better than when it launched. It prints significantly faster, achieves more consistent first layers, and has an impressive enclosure available for those who want to tackle materials like ASA or ABS. With network connectivity, whether wired or through the Wi-Fi upgrade, it seamlessly integrates with Prusa Connect, allowing you to queue up prints and churn out jobs like a well-oiled machine. The new Prusa app adds convenience with print notifications, and while the Mini technically supports camera snapshots via a phone or ESP camera, the setup is clunky and far from the effortless experience hinted at in the original post of plugging in a camera to the Mini's board. The Prusa ecosystem remains a standout. Printables is one of the best repositories for 3D models. Prusa Connect and Prusa Link make managing printers straightforward, whether you prefer cloud or local control. And Prusa Mint is the gold standard for filament quality in my book. And where would we be without Prusa's investment into Prusa Slicer? Probably still dealing with something like Cura. It's hard not to appreciate the ecosystem's thoughtful design and reliability. But this brings us to the elephant in the room. Price versus competition. The Prusa Mini Plus kit costs $429 US with another $20 for the filament sensor and almost $60 in shipping from Prague. In contrast, Bamboo Labs A1 Mini with its four color AMS light system costs $349 with $29 in shipping. For less money, you're getting not just faster printing, but a multi-material capability that Prusa cannot touch at this price point. The Mini isn't even compatible with Prusa's MMU3. Prusa's open source ethos and commitment to the community are commendable. The 3D printing industry as we know it wouldn't exist without their contributions. But as MKBHD once said, it's not that the good got cheap, the cheap got cheap good. Prusa isn't just competing with the cheap anymore. They're up against affordable machines that are also high performing and innovative. I respect Prusa deeply, but I worry about their future. Competing on price with behemoths like Bamboo Lab isn't sustainable. Instead, Prusa should double down on their strengths, high-end machines and professional markets where they can maintain healthy margins. Their Core 1, XL, and especially the automated Prusa farm system are perfect examples of groundbreaking innovations they should focus on. That farm system looks absolutely sick, by the way. As for the Mini, it's time to let it go. If you already own a Prusa Mini, like I do, it's a solid printer that will serve you well for a while longer. And I have no doubt that Prusa will continue to release firmware updates for it. But when it comes time to replace parts or upgrade the extruder or hot end, you'll need to ask yourself, is it worth the time and money? How many small PTFE tubes in that hot end do you want to buy and pay for shipping from Prague for? For me, here at the end of 2024, the answer is clear. The Prusa Mini is no longer worth it. The Prusa Mini had a great run, but its time has passed. I think it's time for Prusa to retire the Mini and focus their efforts on the innovations that will shape their future rather than redoing every part of this printer to bring it into the modern age. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. You can find all my links in the description, including my Etsy store, Tuba Makes, where I sell resin miniatures and display pieces. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm the Legend Tuba Guy, and I'll catch you in the next one.